Hello everybody, my name is Will and welcome back to Flyout. Now today we're going to be building something that has been heavily requested a couple of times now. Uh, I'd say pretty much on every single video you guys want me to build a VTOL, so here you go. We're going to be doing it, but we're going to be doing it a little bit different. We're not going to be doing F-35 style, we're not going to be doing uh, Harrier style. Harrier style because you can't do that at the moment. F-35 style because... You also can't really do that at the moment, to be entirely honest. <laughs> so, instead of doing all of those complex different ways, we're going to do it in a much more complex, but also simpler way. A way that can be done, I guess is the best way to phrase that at the moment. Uh, you can just see me styling the nose of this thing at the moment, and the stylistic choices may reveal a little bit about what I'm going to be doing. Uh, but chances are the thumbnail's already done that long before I said that, so that was an entirely redundant statement, but oh well. Uh, regardless, we're going to be doing a propeller-driven vertical takeoff and landing aircraft here. So that is a challenge for sure, and a practical limitation of the design would be uh, propellers, unlike jets, aren't propelled by... Uh, a stream of air leaving the back of it, I guess. Um, and in a, when you've got a stream of air leaving something, and then wherever it comes out, that is where the thrust comes from. You can vector that. You can change the angle at which that air leaves the aircraft. And at that point, you can create a vertical lift system that doesn't require the entire engine to move. So, on the F-35, it simply rotates the nozzle. On the Harrier, it does the same thing, but with the side nozzles. It's a completely different arrangement, but it's doing the same thing fundamentally. Uh, in this, we we don't have that luxury. We have spinning propeller blades that can rotate, sure, at any angle, but in real life, you have to connect that up to a piston engine via a crankshaft, via a drive shaft, via all of those fancy things, into a gearbox, into the propeller. And that requires a lot of very, very technical things that I have no idea how to do, in, <laughs> in real life at least. Um, now, that essentially means, what I'm saying here, is this design is completely impractical and would never ever work. However, that didn't stop this being based off a real design. This is this, this sorry, this design is based off the Vesselflug P1003, and you can see me here building in the vertical lift surfaces in the same way that it has it on that design. So the original plan was we would tilt the wing halfway and we'd have this really cool look about it. It, it, it was a cool idea, um, but there's a serious problem with that, which is you kind of need the wings for lift. And when you rotate half of the wings vertically upwards, they're suddenly less like a lifting surface and uh, more like a brick wall attempting to fly at 300 kilometers an hour. And you can imagine the aerodynamics of that situation start to get a little bit, shall we say, bad. Uh... <laughs> But, uh, I mean, you'll see how this performs in just a second. Um, in both horizontal and vertical takeoff configurations, it doesn't do a particularly good job. You can see, we're just rolling down the runway. Forever. And then with the vertical lift, it just doesn't even take off. Uh, now, <laughs> it tries to go, but it just, it just falls over to one side. And basically, um... The aerodynamics were just stalling immediately over the wings when you tilted them upwards. So eventually I decided that that wasn't going to work. I did try a couple more iterations. You can see uh, we had two engines side by side in this initial iteration as well. I changed that to one big engine to power both of them because I was finding inconsistencies between the RPMs of the engines could cause the plane to tilt and then once it started tilting one of the propellers could stall because it's actually moving backwards relative to the air and blah blah blah. Generally it was a bit of a nightmare to get this thing to work and I don't recommend you try it because uh, this may look like a very short process. This was like nine hours of work so uh, yeah. Okay, and finally we find ourselves with the finished product. So thank you a lot to a fella called Gomax on the official 
fly out Discord server because he's modified this to make it just work a little bit better. We had a couple of problems in the normal mode where it was very stable when it was flying in VTOL and not very stable when it was flying in normal mode. And uh, last night I kind of tried to record this section and it crashed the game like a hundred times. I think I recorded about three minutes of footage and must have crashed six times during it. But uh, the crashes are fixed, the aircraft is fixed. Let's take her off. Let's show you what I've got. Okay, here we are, bouncing away on the runway, and if I give her some throttle here, you can see, oh god, she does take off uh, vertically. It can just be a little bit tricky <laughs> to actually stabilize it. So the best way I've found to counteract that is to just give her a little bit of forwards propeller as well. And then you get a little bit of control, although that wasn't quite enough. Oh, I tried to save it. <laughs> okay, even more of an angle. <laughs> there we go. No, why? There we go. Are we good? Are we good? Are we living? Yes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're finally up into the air. It took a couple of tries, but there you go. Um, and, as you can see, it flies quite nicely, actually, when you've got the propellers facing upwards. However, when you put them forwards, it does leave a little to be desired. So, you can see we kind of get up to about, I think it's about 450 we top out. It's not particularly quick, um, but, you know, it it flies. <laughs> and ultimately, yeah, could you do this in a B-25? Could you take off vertically in that? No, no, you couldn't. <laughs> Although, I imagine this would have more utility as some kind of cargo thing, rather than, oh, my wheels are clipping through my fuselage. That's not ideal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we can come back and attempt a landing here, but uh, I reckon it's about high time we start looking into giving this thing a camouflage scheme and uh, just finalizing this design here. Okay, so actually coming in for landing is a bit of an interesting prospect, because we can't tilt them back further than 90 degrees, so it's just kind of uh, got to lose some speed and then just keep the throttle low. We've got to lose some more altitude than this. Not quite going to be able to do it from all the way up there. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're going to be here for a little while. But if I just pitch her back, she will start losing speed. And then at some point, we'll start descending. Here we go. Uh, let's give her some more of the old beans. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, that's not good. Uh... Perfect. <laughs> oh, and we're back into a little bit of an impromptu, unexpected building segment. Uh, yeah, I ended up spending a really, really long time actually modifying this, so we started with a fairly simple kind of prototype-looking paint scheme. It kind of looks US Coast Guard, to be entirely honest. I don't really know. Uh, I... I, I was very frazzled <laughs> when doing this, so, um, but yeah, I, I just kind of went around and I added a couple of niceties that uh, I felt like it was missing, so we've got the uh, engine stacks there, the uh, exhaust stacks, just because, you know, we got a massive V12 in there, we got to have the <laughs> gases from it come out somewhere, they can't just stay in the plane, that wouldn't be particularly good for our you know, pilot's health there. Uh, and then also, what you see me doing at the moment is adding uh, landing gear doors to the rear landing gear. I, I didn't do it to the front landing gear. I was I was feeling a little bit, a little bit lazy, uh, <laughs> to be honest. But I thought I'd give it a try uh, for the rear landing gears because it's not something that we've done before here. Um, 
And it, it, I mean, you'll see in a second, but they really add something else to these builds. So the way that this works is we just have a second input, which is also set to a minimum of zero and a maximum of 90 degrees. And then we set these uh, hinges to also a minimum of zero and maximum of 90, blah, blah, blah. Attach the uh, fuselage that we've duplicated to that, uh, shrink it down and hide any elements that won't be used for the door so that it won't clip on the ground, but also it doesn't look like a full fuselage that's just rotating. Uh, and then I did actually connect them in the bottom, but I realized that looks more like a bomb bay. Uh, we're not going for a bomb bay, we're going for a landing gear bay. So eventually I do realize that and I uh, reconnect the uh, actual fuselage and cut out the middle of those gear bays. But uh, yeah, that's, that's that bit done. <laughs> Okay, so we've added a little bit of a paint scheme as well as these two doors back here for the gears to go in. I've never really done that before, but I've learned how to do it, and I will show you in a minute how all of this works, but we'll just do a little demonstration flight to show you where we're at. So, in theory, we should still be able to fly. Uh, that's not a good demonstration. <laughs> I gotta say, the uh, advent of com computerization for flight systems may well have uh, helped the dreams of those who wanted to take off vertically this kind of uh, era. Yeah, maybe it was best left in fiction, but here we go. Up into the air we go, and we can close up our little gear doors, which, I mean, that is pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they do add quite a lot to a build, which you don't really think about until they're not there, I guess. I haven't added one for the front yet, because uh, mostly I'm lazy, but, uh, oh well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, we're in a position now where it flies somewhat competently, at a somewhat reasonable speed, as well as being able to take off almost vertically. It's, it's very short takeoff and landing, but not quite vertical. I mean, you could probably do vertical, but it's it's not exactly safe. Let's bring her in for a landing then, if we can manage that this time, and uh, hopefully not crash and burn horribly this time, like we did before. Um, if we just do a little bit of a rotation here, we're going to have to bring her down to much lower altitude, extend the flaps... And if we just honestly do a regular landing, it's probably much safer at this point in time. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> oh, I've forgotten to bound brakes, haven't I? Well, uh, we'll go for the old one too. <laughs> Perfect landing every time. Where did my cockpit go? Huh. And as promised just before we go today, we'll take a look at how this whole system is set up. So, we have two inputs here. We have tilt and we have gear doors. The one that is particularly complicated is tilt, uh, but the actual range of it isn't too bad. So we've got a nine, minus 95 range on the propellers, meaning they can tilt back 5 degrees, and a max range of 0, which means they can tilt forwards to a flat angle from where they are right now. By default, they're set to be minus 30, but the default seems to take a minute to kick in, which is why you've probably not noticed that. Uh, then we have in here some, if I can find them, swing joints, which connect these engine pods to the tips of the wings. These are just assigned to the tilt axis, and they can go 90 degrees either way, but obviously the axis is limiting them. Uh, and then... The engine nacelles themselves, these pod bits, are literally just an aerodynamic housing, a gearbox, and a propeller. There is no uh, engine in these propellers themselves. Uh, all of the power comes from this one big central V12, uh, liquid-cooled V12, pumping out 5,700 kilowatts and 21,700 newton meters of torque. It's quite the engine, uh, to say the least. Probably a reliability nightmare, and what definitely would be a reliability nightmare in real life is you'd have to run your drive shaft down each wing at this kind of an angle. 
<laughs> in order to actually have a reliable connection to the crankshaft, and then you'd need some fancy gearing in order to make it all work, and when it rotates, oh god, it would be a nightmare. Don't do this. This <laughs> It's a terrible idea, but uh, yeah, I mean, other than the obvious drawbacks of this thing being kind of hard to fly, kind of hard to take off, and kind of hard to land, uh, the practicality of it, and uh, the fact that it doesn't carry any guns, um, I reckon we've got a pretty good VTOL. <laughs> so, if I just give her some beans one last time, we will get her into the air, or we'll uh, do that. Uh, that's... Yep, no, that's fine. That's exactly what I intended to do. Uh, well, if you enjoyed this one, <laughs> um, then please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. I'm sorry if this one was a little bit janky. It has been a long recording session spanning multiple days now. Um, oh, goodness me. This has been one hell of a headache to get working. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for more ridiculous things like this in the future. Goodbye! And a huge thank you to this channel's patrons, as always, Badger, Burn and Potato, Cam John 135 Cody N, DJ, Pete, Skavoon, Gamasa929, Sad Cat, Just Casualty 611, Last 711, Mark, Modley Invested, Nicholas K, Rolls, Bachman, Ryan Brody, The Canadian Emperor, Zarashime, and Zite Wolverine. Thank you so much for your support, and sorry for blasting your eardrums out with the game audio this video. Whoops.